Do you find quilting expensive? There is so much to buy and it seems like you need something new with every quilt. But not all tools cost money. Some are online and some you can upcycle. Here are my top 10 favorite free tools. So stick with me and I'll show you how to do it. Hi there, I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. I give you tips, tricks, and strategies to help you make the quilt that you want to make. And if you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button. Let's face it, quilting is an expensive hobby. Between your sewing machine and accessories, all the cutting tools, the patterns, and of course, the fabric, all of it adds up really fast. However, there are many free resources to help you and quite a few items you can upcycle. And here are my top 10 favorite free tools. Prequilt is an online design tool and you can start using it for free. Free membership includes one quilt design and you don't need your credit card to sign up. You can make a design using their block library or design your own blocks and design your own quilt pattern. Then download and print your design so you can refer to it. Or you can take an existing pattern and color it your way. This means you'll have confidence in your colors and in your design before you cut your fabric. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a little while, you know that this is one of my favorite tools. I designed my red quilt with it in my stash management video. I used it in my no fail layer cake method. And of course I did the pre-quilt challenge. And I believe they're going to have coloring sheets for this year's 100 days, 100 blocks quilt along with Gnome Angel. And they have a YouTube channel with lots of tutorials as they are adding new features all the time. We receive a lot of cardstock in our lives. It comes in the mail, in magazines, and in packaging. And this is perfect for English paper piecing. I use it two ways. I have a hexi punch for simple hexagons that I put in my hexi kit. And this goes everywhere with me so that I can always keep my hands busy. But you can also use it in more complicated work. Simply design your block and cut it out. Wrap your fabric and sew. Unfortunately, there's a lot of foam in packaging and I have found a place to use it. Our cutting mats trap fibers with every cut. I experimented with lots of different types of foam. I have found this type of foam very effective in grabbing those little bits with little effort. You know I love my batting scraps, so you're probably wondering how well it worked on batting fibers. So I took it for a test drive. I found this firm foam with all these air pockets, definitely the best. Might need a second pass, but it gets all the fibers in the end. I just did a video on cutting straight. I showed how a weight on the end of your ruler can really help keep that ruler steady. But you don't need to go out and buy a set of weights. Go to your pantry, a bag of rice, a jug of oil, or maple syrup, or a big can of tomatoes will do the job just as well. And before anybody puts it in the comments, be sure they are clean and the lids secured. And if you want to, you can make a sandbag out of the rice like I have. My friend Geeky Bobbin has a free reference sheet called the Magical Rainbow of Binding. And it makes it so easy to calculate how many binding strips you'll need. All you need is the height and the width of your quilt and the color of the square will tell you how many strips you need. At first I thought, I'm good at math, I don't need this. Trust me, this will save you so much time and hassle and you just might stop second guessing yourself. Download it and print it, then keep it near your cutting table. One of the challenges of a new quilter is finding patterns that appeal to your sense of style and color. Libraries have quilting books and magazines that you can borrow and use as required. And because they build up their collection over time, you can have access to a deep catalog of books and not just the shiny and new ones. So you can find the magazines and books that show the quilts that you wanna make. And for many libraries, you can now reserve online. Your local librarians are also a great resource for finding related books and topics. 
You know I love color, and I did a whole series on color, color harmony, and finding your color zone. And you can get started with your personal color zone with the free download on my website of 12 color wedges showing all the hues, tints, tones, and shades, as well as the various color harmonies. In my video, Five Fabric Exercises, I showed how a color wheel can help you identify those desaturated colors. Plus, I like to keep a copy in each of my fabric boxes so that I keep fabrics of the same hue together. Let's say you have a fabric that you want to use and you need some inspiration for some complementary colors. Design Seed can help you. It's an online app, not only with seasonal inspiration, but also a library of beautiful color stories that you can search through to find something special. Some color stories are high contrast, some are very soft. And just on its own, I find when I look through the blog and the wonderful color palettes, it just makes my day better. Similar, but not the same, is the color palette generator at coolers.co. This time you upload a JPEG and the online app generates a suggested color palette based on the colors in the photo. This is a really useful tool when you're making quilts for others and you want to narrow down what colors they like or associate it with a special memory. Cereal boxes are another upcycling tool that I find so helpful. First, I use them for templates to test drive my fabric to see how well it will work in a particular size block in my quilt. I also use them to cut out marking jigs or simple marking templates. I can also use them for mini bolts, shelf liners, and more. Now there are many free apps that I use on my phone, but I've already done that video. The video is packed with all sorts of tools to make your life easier. So take a moment and watch it. I will leave a link in the notes below for all the online apps and the videos that I've referenced. And I'm sure you might have a couple of more, so please leave them in the comments below. This week on Karen's Quilt Circle, I interviewed Ursula McClintock, and we talked about all things scissors, what you want in your beginner pair and what you want in your forever pair. And you don't wanna miss that, so I'll leave a link to that in the notes below as well. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell beside the subscribe button so that YouTube will notify you when I make new videos. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest at Just Get It Done Quilts. And of course, and subscribe to my newsletter at JustGetItDoneQuilts.com. So take care and I'll see you next time.